and therefore it makes a very hard, sturdy rock that people like to put in countertops and things and kitchens. Granite. Granite. Granite, right? Granite used to be magma. It used to be underground when it was melted. It cooled slowly, insulated under the Earth's surface, cooled slowly. And so now when it breaks down, when it erodes, it creates very sandy, large crystalline soil. Up there on the mesa tops, that's where you find the vernal pools. They stand very for a very long amount of time because they're on clay soil. That retains water very well. This, if I was to pour water on this, what does the water do immediately upon being poured on sandy soil? Washes it away. It soaks in there. It percolates down quickly. So in this area, we're mostly going to be seeing granite. We're mostly going to be seeing rock that used to be magma. And you've seen it all the time. I mean, mentioned it before, you know, countertops. Uh, you go to the mall down in Temecula, the floor, all old magma, granite, which has these big crystals. And they're telling you that. Remember, everything has a story. Everything has a language. Everything is talking to you. You just need to know its language. This rock is saying, I used to be magma. I cooled slowly underground, big crystals. <laughs> So this area, we're going to have a lot of sandy soil. So the plants have to get their water through their roots and then hold on to it. Because that soil is not going to hold on to water very well. It's going to soak through the soil past the roots. And so those plants have to have what kind of structures, what, what, what physiology do they need to conserve water? Give me some attributes of plants that can live in sandy soils? More hollowed? Um, like waxy leaves? Uh, well, mm -hmm. waxy not leaves. so much hollow. Mm -hmm. I think what you might mean is that they um, might be um, kind of, I don't know what you mean actually. I'll try. I, I really try. <laughs> I'm not sure actually. Well, cactus, aren't they like hollow inside? Oh, they oh, well, they're not hollow inside, but they will have a, a tough outer surface. You're right. So they'll be more of a, um, a, a woody kind of outside structure, right? So, yes, they'll have woody structures. That's why in this area, all these plants that you're going to be seeing are very hard, tough, woody in structure, which is why people invented something to protect their legs as they rode their horses through this plant community with these tough woody stems. Does anybody know what cowboys and cowgirls wore over the fronts of their pants to protect them? Chaps. Yeah. Chaps, right? But I think they should be pronounced chaps because they're named after this most common plant community in California called Chaparral. Chaparral, Chaparral right? And one of the reasons why it's so co common is because what climate are we in right now? Mediterranean. The Mediterranean climate. So wet <laughs> winters. Look at all these plants. They're telling you we get a lot of water for part of the year. But how are the summers in Mediterranean climate? Hello, bug. Dry and hot, right? <laughs> so they've got to grab that water in the winter time and then hold on to it with tough woody stems. And what size leaves? Small. Small leaves. This is called buckwheat. This is called chemise. There's wild honeysuckle, scrub oak. There's also going to be found manzanita, ceanothus, all woody stem plants with little leaves. And little leaves say, I retain and conserve water. So anytime you see a plant with little leaves, it's saying, hey, much of the year is dry where I live. So this is the chaparral. Mediterranean climate and sandy soil. We have a lot of granite in California, a lot of sandy soils in California, and so this plant dominates in that because it can hold on to that water with those tough woody stems and those little leaves. But down here, there's a different plant community and a few of the same characteristics on some of these plants. So we've got up higher on steep slopes the chaparral. And most of the Santa Ana Mountains are chaparral. Fairly steep 
slopes in the Santa Ana Mountains, sandy soils, wet winters, dry summers. But down in the lower points of an area, you're going to have more water. Because the rain falls up there, gravity's always going to win, right? Yep. No matter what you're talking about, gravity always wins. People try to fight it, but it's always going to win. Gravity comes, that brings the water down here. And so, does anybody know the name of this plant community? It's got trees. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. Now, this kind of tree is uh, an oak. So, this is an oak woodland. Now, a forest would be a plant community with trees, but a lot more trees. So, usually up higher in elevation where there's more rain in Southern California, more snow melt. Here, with these trees, there's more space between the trees, so it's a woodland. So forest, a lot of trees close together. Woodland, fewer trees further apart. But what do you notice about this plant's ability to live here in a Mediterranean climate? Because you know it's very dry here in the summer. What do you think this plant is gonna have to have in order to survive this Southern California summertime? It's going to have to have water. How's it going to conserve its water? Smallish leaves, very good. Definitely not very big leaves. Excellent. Deep what roots. About the leaves. Waxy, very hard, tough. Uh, and it holds water a lot better than real uh, flexible and, and, uh, and porous leaves. So what else about the leaves? Those are all good reasons. There's more. And this plant is telling you. You just need to know its language. That's all. Will it drop its leaves? Look closely at the leaves. Just describe them. See if oh. you can notice. What do they have? They're oh. bowl shaped. They're bowl shaped. The parts of a plant oh. leaf that lose water are those holes on the underbelly of the leaf. Remember, a plant can't take in water through the roots unless it loses water huh. out of the leaves. Close that. Right now yeah. there's water vapor Here's going the out of these leaves. As water vapor goes on, out Dana. of the leaves, Liquid Anna. water is replaced Anna. into the roof. Holding the leaves for the camera. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, you can't lose too much water or you'll dry out and die. So this plant has cut the leaves and is protecting those holes that lose moisture from too much direct sunlight and wind. The wind is going to dry out a plant and that's okay. I mean, a plant wants to lose moisture, but it can't lose that much moisture. So it's going to curl the leaves, it's going to cut them, because this is a post live oak. It always has to have its roots in water or it dies. It always looks alive. It always has leaves on it. If it doesn't have leaves on it, that means it's dying. So, a couple leaves. What else about the leaves? You know? What's the other kind of oak called? Not live oak, but... Uh, Anything else about the shape? Pygmy? No. Um, but what's on the edges, if you have good that. eyes? Pointy, sharp, spiny I mean, edges, edges, right? Those increase the surface area of the oh, leaf. Sure. So even in the summertime, they're getting water. How are they going to get water? Through the moisture in the atmosphere. And it'll come off the coast, which is less than 20 miles away, Mist. in the form of? Fog. Fog. And that fog is going to condense on these leaves. And if your leaves have more surface area by having these little spines, you're going to collect more water from the atmosphere. You're going to harvest moisture from the atmosphere, in this case, mostly from fog. And then it's going to drip it down to what's called the drip line. And it's the drip line where the majority of the roots are ending and then taking in water. And that's another reason why this is where you're going to find the new recruits or, or the next generation. Because they're going to have a little There's bit a more there. moisture. And what else are they getting right here on the edge? Sun. Sunlight, right? In there, unless the tree falls over, they're all going to perish. There's just not enough sunlight, not enough of that star's energy getting in there. They'll grow up to a certain height, but then after a certain height, they just, uh, they need more energy. They're not getting it. They'll either kind of go dormant and wait and wait for dad or mom to, to die, and then they'll grow, or they'll just die out. So out here, along the drip line, they're getting more sunlight and a little bit of the extra water drip. So this is the woodland. So we've seen the chaparral, we've seen the woodland. Now let's go down and see another rare plant community.